My name is Jesse Lee. I'm a graduate student at Texas State University, where my focus is international studies and primarily Asian studies. This is a proposal for a documentary about the life of the actor Seshu Hayakawa. I first became aware of Seshu Hayakawa in early 2010. I stumbled across a silent film of his called The Dragon Painter and was curious about it because it seemed to be an American production, but it had a Japanese subject and what seemed to be a primarily Japanese cast. Uh, I was extremely curious though because when I watched the movie it didn't seem to be quite right. The Japanese names were a little peculiar and locations that were set in Japan seemed to not actually reflect what Japan looked like. In actuality I was already aware of Seshu Hayakawa from films that I loved in my childhood like The Swiss Family Robinson and The Bridge on the River Kwai. But now I was aware of Seshu Hayakawa by name, not just by face, and also aware of his career spanning back to the silent era. I started looking for information about Hayakawa and found very little that wasn't just copied and pasted between different articles and sites. There are in fact only two long-form sources about Seshu Hayakawa. Daisuke Miao's Seshu Hayakawa, Silent Cinema and Transnational Stardom, an academic source of information, and although long out of print, Hayakawa's autobiography titled Zen Showed Me the Way. However, even these two books together do not create a very complete portrait of Hayakawa who, for all intents and purposes, was the first superstar of American cinema. Miao's book is excellent and of course does contain some biographical information, but Miao's book is primarily a sociological study about conditions present in the U.S that allowed this Japanese national to become such a massive star, especially in the minds of white American women. The primary concern with Hayakawa's autobiography is that it's simply incomplete. It was originally published in 1960, one year before the death of his wife Tsuru Aoki, and six years before his retirement from acting, and his subsequent decision to enter the final chapter of his life as a Zen Buddhist priest. Another issue is that by the time his autobiography was published, Hayakawa was already well acquainted from his silent film career with the process of very carefully constructing his image to maximize appeal and minimize xenophobic response to his status as a Japanese national. And in fact, Humphrey Bogart's interest in Hayakawa rescued him from obscurity in 1949. Keep in mind that when the autobiography was published, it was just 15 years after the end of World War II. I'm not trying to suggest that I think Hayakawa is lying in his autobiography, but I think there is recognition all throughout history of the power of myth-making. And whether or not Hayakawa is engaging in a process of myth-making, uh, consciously or unconsciously, I can't say for sure. My goal for this project is multifaceted. I want to expand the knowledge of Hayakawa's remarkable life and present a less self-conscious, less guarded portrait through interviews with remaining family members and exposure to any journals, letters, etc. I have this perception of Hayakawa as a somewhat tragic figure whose enormous success could not shield him from the torrent uh, of changes in international politics, perceptions of race and identity, and allegiance to nation that were present all throughout his life. This documentary is meant to serve as my master's thesis. One might wonder why I've decided to submit my thesis in the form of a film. And the most simple answer is that Hayakawa was a movie star, and a movie about Hayakawa seems like the most fitting and dynamic way to represent his life. The first problem is that this documentary is extremely travel intensive. There's a need to travel to locations in Japan, to France, where as I understand it, Hayakawa spent the World War II years basically in exile, and to various locations in the U.S. The one benefit though is that I have very good friends in virtually every location that I'll be traveling to. So the most substantial aspect of the cost is really just getting to the places. So potential problem number two is my own ethnicity and place of origin. And despite my awareness of this potential problem or the fact that I've traveled all over the world or whatever higher education I may have, um, 
there will be subtleties to Hayakawa's experience that I simply may not have a sensitivity for. So while this is not willful ignorance, uh, it's just another impediment to being able to know Hayakawa more or beyond what is already known. Problem number three is that there's a real potential to fail. Because this documentary is a thesis, it needs to contain a central question. My question, is it possible to know how Seshu Hayakawa felt about his life beyond what's already been presented by the few sources that exist about him, might be answered no. In that case, what you might see is less a portrait of Hayakawa than a record of realization that even in this era where so much information can be summoned instantaneously with just a few keystrokes, there are still things that can't be known, even the thoughts and feelings of a single person.